Welcome back folks, my name's Anthony Valentine the Camper Nerd. Today I'm just going to be doing a habitation video of this lovely 2001 Auto Sleeper Executive. This one's going to Belfast tomorrow, it's sailing out to Belfast to its new home tomorrow. So I'm just doing a video so the guy can watch it. Um, yeah, I used to sell a lot of vehicles and supply a lot of vehicles to Ireland. Unfortunately since Brexit, some people voted Brexit and uh, the pound exchange rate now so we don't sell many to the southern part of Ireland but still a lot are going to Belfast. Anyway so let's show you around this lovely 2001 Auto Sleep Executive. Shall we start at the beginning? Where's the beginning? Ah no, the beginning is the front. So this is on a Peugeot Boxer chassis 2.8. Um, it's all been serviced, in fact the last owner serviced this a couple of months ago so everything's been taken care of but everything's been checked over. So hopefully the new owner will only be attending to this blue cap which is the windscreen washer water. So we've got the water, the radiator water which should be in these two gaps, it has been topped up with antifreeze. That's an expansion tank so you only want it in between those two gaps, room for it to expand. We've got the dipstick for the oil oil filler cap just behind it the blue cap here is for the master cylinder for the brake fluid and we've got the power steering fluid here but everything's been checked on this particular one this one's a 2.8 turbo diesel but hopefully the new owner will only be having to attend to here it's even and it's rated this one is the magic number it's 3200 kilograms so you can drive this on an ordinary driving license anything up to 3.5 ton uh, okay, so coming down the passenger side, fuel here, diesel. This particular one, uh, a previous owner, has actually upgraded, so there's keys on it and upgraded the locks. So you've got the standard locks as well as the dead locks. So, on here is, I've even included a new six kilogram propane gas bottle for the new owner. Um, as always, I recommend that we with this one has been changed the gas hose and the regulator you should be changing these every five years that'll conform to the latest gas safety regulations and that means it can be issued with a new habitation safety certificate so on this particular one so we're just doing the we're just winding that anti-clockwise and that switched on the gas And that's all safety checked, all metal protected. We've got drop down vents there because gas, if you had a leak, gas is heavier than air. So if there was a leak for any reason, you've got the safety vents and it would go out the bottom. I've seen so many, uh, well, what kind of work? Mickey Mouse conversions, people who have bought builders vans in lockdown. They've been watched a couple of YouTube videos and think they can convert a, a builders van into a camper van. Uh, and we've seen so many stories. The, uh, electrics are not fitted correctly they've not earthed out the mains they've got electrics um, passing gas pipes they've got gas bottles not in a metal cage with a drop down vents the list of safety features is endless on something that is manufactured from new so this is one of those particular examples so that's why we don't get involved in homemade aftermarket camper conversions Anyway, everything's been checked out on this. Coming around, uh, this particular model has got two outside drawers. So we've got a drawer there as well as the nice big size locker. This one, that's your vents for the fridge. Now this particular has already got the winter vents on. So a flat screwdriver, a knife, pull them off and that will come off. We say winter vents because if there was a gust of wind, you could just hear a little bit of wind inside. You just put the winter vents on, but they can come off now and that'll be fine. But that's the ventilation for the three-way fridge. On the leisure door, we've just got a very straightforward drop-down step. So when that's up like that, you can just kick it with a foot and put it back into place. Coming round the back, it's got a standard two-bike Fiorma awning. We've got a nice ladder that was originally fitted by auto sleepers uh, this has got the auto sleeper typical of auto sleeper over engineered i think stabilizers the, the chassis is so well built and designed i can't think of a reason you would need these stabilizers out perhaps if you was square wheeled on a hard standing pitch for a couple of months or on you know on an angle you might want to put these wind these stabilizer down but other than that you shouldn't need to 
Coming round to the near side rear, so we've got the standard Fetford cassette toilet. So we just press the lever here and that will pull out. If for any reason that is stuck solid, that means the trap door in the toilet basin is not quite closed. So this goes for anything with a motorhome. If it doesn't quite work first time, never force anything. Just have a stop, a breather and a think about it and there will be an answer. Or feel free to ask me the question. So we just press this lever, pull the cassette down, uh, that will empty out. The filler cap here is actually used as a measuring cap. So we've got two types of chemicals. We've got blue and pink. If you can remember the caravanners rhyme, so we've got pink for the stink, for the flush, and we've got blue for the loo. So we just fill that up to the top and that will save you any odours. When you're emptying this out, if just to get the last little bit of airlock, you can just press that lever. And then this particular one, you've even got space underneath the cassette and you can get yourself four little Fetford bottles. So you could have two little pinks and two little blues and you've got chemicals inside there. On the driver's side, so we've got two big tanks underneath, a wastewater tank as well as a freshwater. If the camera can just get in, there is the freshwater tank. So that's the tap to undo the water from the freshwater. And the wastewater, if I can just come round, is tucked in underneath here. If I can just get the tap out, there it is. And there's the tap for the wastewater. Um, so we've got the mains hookup lead. You can see it's plugged in now. You press that blue lever to remove. So that has got a little cut out there. That will only go one way. The cutout goes to the bottom. We just press that in, lever at top. That will click into place solid and will provide a watertight um, seal. So when it's in, it's stuck in. So we just press that blue lever to the left and that will release it. Moving forward, we've got another outside locker at the side. Uh, we've got a winter cover here, so that is the Truma exhaust flue for heating the hot water on gas. Also heats on mains, I'll show you that inside. And we've got the fresh water inlet. So again, this is 20 years old at the time of filming. Uh, you don't know what's been in there for two decades. I would always recommend hose pipe in there, opening the tap, flushing out for maybe half an hour, Tighten in the tap, put some purity clean in, not Milton tablets or Milton sterilizing clean uh, fluid that could damage the taps, the boiler, as well as the pipes. So, puri clean, P U R I clean. Um, put that in, wait 24 hours, little drive around, swish it around the tank, let it settle, drain again flush through then reset and then you should be all right you'll have no smells or odors but at least you'll be all right for drinking it maybe after boiling i personally still don't do that i carry a three liter bottle of water myself and i use that for drinking but that'll be perfectly fine for washing up in showers etc okay i think that's it on the outside um yes i've shown you under the bonnet yeah let's go inside and i'll show you all the fixtures and features inside So first things first is the very straightforward auto sleeper panel. Um, literally just an on and an off switch. We've got a green light there now because it's plugged in on mains. So that is indicating two things. So when it's plugged in on mains, it will be charging the leisure battery, which is fitted under the driver's seat. And it will always also be charging the fridge or cooling the fridge on the most efficient 240 main setting. Okay, so coming back to the control panel, very straightforward, on and off. So that will power all the bits and bobs of the accessories, leisure items off the leisure battery. And we've got one button there to pump. So that'll be for your water pump, for your hot water, taps and shower accessory. The fuse panel for this, the amount of water sleeper owners that over the years can't find the fuses, you'll have one of two fuses near the leisure battery, which is underneath the driver's seat but you've also got this control panel here so you just put a, a flat knife or a blade in there pop that little panel out there and you've got a few glass fuses so that's fuses for the leisure battery okay what should we show you first so we've got the heater the traumatic heater on this executive so i've switched the gas bottle on now it's on zero 
So we turn that round to 10. I can hear it going click, click, click. The microphone won't be able to pick that up, but I can hear it going click, 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 spark. We press that. As with all gas items, hold it in for three, four, five seconds. That will purge any air out of the system, particularly if the gas bottle's been switched off or been in storage. Let go, and then I can hear a whoosh, and I can see the pilot light on full blue flame. As I say, it's really tricky for the, for the camera to get in there, but in there, you will see the pilot light and a blue flame, and that will hold. Okay, we'll switch that off to zero. If you wanted to also work that off the mains, off the electricity, switch it on there. We've got low, 500 watts, one kilowatt and two. And we've also got a thermostat there. Okay. All auto sleepers or most of this vintage have one light and one light only that works on mains. So that will be your mains light. So you know if that's working, it's plugged into mains. Other than that, everything else will work off the leisure battery. Everything's been tied and tested. Coming in the wardrobe, so you've got your two legs for the tables. It has two legs, a small one and a large one. Um, you've got the mains fuse box, which will be like your fuse box at home with trip switches, the master trip, as well as the accessories. So if anything went faulty, it would just trip a fuse here and you can reset it. Uh, if you wanted to heat the hot water on mains, we just press that button and that will heat it on hot water. Or if you wanted, to, if you was off the grid, everything on an auto sleeper is designed to charge or work on the mains as well as off grid. There's just an on button here, little green light there, and that will heat the hot water on gas. Uh, everything safety intended. So there's no problem whatsoever if you're in a rush you, and you wanted to heat the hot water, you can put the gas on as well as the mains at the same time. Uh, on this one, we've left the mains hook up and there's even a, a European continental adapter. So the only thing that this one would want is a UK adapter. So that's the female main socket at that side and a three pin a UK standard. That way you can have it plugged in at home before you go away. You've got your fridge nice and cold as well as the battery in tip top condition. Okay, three way fridge. So called because it'll operate on three ways. 12 volt when you're driving, so that's off the engine battery. The green, which will be freezing on the mains, 240 supply. And you've also got the gas when you're wild connecting or wild camping. So well designed and insulated this. If that is charged up or uh, on cold overnight before you set off on mains, and you're topping up when you're driving, that'll stay milk cold for 12 to 24 hours. If you're wild camping off the grid for any longer than 24 hours, you've got the gas facility. I'll demonstrate that now. I always leave these in the on position one and one. So that means automatically you start the engine, it will fridge or top up the cooling effect when you're driving and it will automatically cool when you're plugged in. There's no reason why you would need it on zero. Okay, so, if we're uh, while camping, we put the sparker on spark. I don't know whether the camera can see, it's flack it, flick, flicking away, flacking away, as I said then. We push the gas in, turn round, again, hold this in for three, four, five seconds. That will purge any air out of the system. Let go, and if it stops sparking, which in this case it has, that means that the pilot light is lit. There is a little peephole camera may be able to see in there but when you're at the right angle you'll be able to see a blue flame in there i can feel that's fridging up nicely now and you've got the large cooler and that is really cold large freezer compartment the important thing to notice here always leave the sparker on even when it's when it's uh, lit some amateurs will turn that sparker off thinking well we don't need the sparker because it's lit that is a safety design um, so if there was a gust of wind and it blew out by accident, it will reignite. So I'm just going to demonstrate that now. So we'll just switch the gas off. Hopefully the camera can zoom in on the igniter. And hey presto, it's trying to relight. So it would automatically relight the pilot light. Okay, we'll switch that off now. We've switched the gas off and now we can switch the sparker off. You've got two settings there. So generally... 
95 times out of 100, that will be fine. It's got a magnetic seal and that will hold it. If you was going over rough terrain and you just wanted to push that button in, that will lock it on the lock position. But you've also got another position that you can lock it on. That will leave a bit of a gap. Then if you're leaving it in storage for a few months, you're not going to come back to mildew mould or any undue smells. Okay, so a little section just show you in the wet room, toilet room, shower. It is a wet room, so all the wallpaper in here is waterproof. So we've got the standard Fetford cassette toilet. Below it, we've got a gauge, which is showing green. So we've got room in the cassette. Um, if I go inside, everything's been sanitized. We lift that up, press that button there. You can hear the pump and the motor going, it needs some pink fluid in. So that's the flush, and we turn it round for the trap door. So if that was not completely closed, the cassette would not unclip from outside. Uh, we've got a shower here, removable shower, hot and cold water, standard light above, vanity cabinet, drop down sink, we turn that round, we've got hot and cold water, and then if you want it, once you finish with the water, just slowly move that round and that will go back into the drainage tank the waste water grey tank. If you rush that operation, you might get a bit of splash back here. But again, it's a wet room, so that's nothing to worry about. Um, we've got the opaque privacy glass here, the same button system. Also, we've got the blackout blinds and the fly net. On this particular one, there's just a hook mechanism. So all it does, you just pull that down, he says, hooks into there, and then that will hold it into place. We just undo the hook and that's the fly net back up and we've got a shower net at the floor underneath the carpet you've got the shower tray and that is the wet room so the standard auto sleeper monocoque rear kitchen solid wood little catch there to hold it in position we've got lots of mains sockets this will spin round and you've got your hot and cold water when you're operating the pump. Gas hobs, just press it. Now I'm not gonna go around everyone. It's gonna be hard for the, the camera to pick up. I'll just hold that down. You can just about see a blue flame there. That's what we're looking for. Anything other than a blue flame, switch off, purge the air once more, but it might just be a bit of debris and it just wanna clean, but this particular one is spotless and everything's been checked out. Just spin the tap round there now. While we're here with the fly nets, so that will click down, and behind there you've also got the fly nets as well as the thermal blackouts. These are thermal on that side, so in theory it should keep you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Um, anything else to show you around here? Standard grill, oven, Underneath the kitchen sink, more storage space. Oh, last owner's left some cutlery. So there's some cutlery there. Brucey bonus for the new owner. He's clicking to place, so we'll be rattle free when it's driving. Uh, anything else to show you around here? The nice little features, lots of little cupboards. The auto sleeper have gone to the trouble of making. That is not an auto sleeper shelf, so a previous owner, the last owner had this for 15 years, so they must have enjoyed it and liked it. But well, that is not an auto sleeper shelf, just a note there. Uh, again, you've got the curtains, everything's matching with the original scatter cushions, windows. So don't force anything, if anything, that goes for everything on a motorhome if it doesn't quite work. Just stop and have a think about it. They're designed with a button to release and that locks into place and then you can have those the windows on various positions and lock it into place or you can actually slot it into the center place press the red button there and then that will have just a little nice little gap if it's raining you'll still be watertight you won't be getting rain inside but you've just got that nice little bit of ventilation so we click those with a button and those are locked in place for travel again large thermal blinds, blackouts, as well as the fly nets. Okay, so if we can just spin the camera around and I'll demonstrate the bed. 
Okay, so this is the executive model. So it has the two very large sofa beds. So these can come together, little lever either side. That will bring over to the centre, so will that. One of the cushions will fill in the gap. So that will make a very large double, well, king side bed. But both these seats will fold, uh, fold, will slide forward. At the back of each seat has got a little ledge and it's got lots of filling cushions here. And then that will make a massive queen size bed. The front passenger side on the bottom left is a lever and that will spin that round. So that's a nice feature. So this is part of now the leisure area and the curtains will come all the way around this. So you're utilizing all the front cab as leisure space. Above the cab on this one, we can have it set up like this. So as you can see, very tall all the way through if you're using it as a two berth. However, two little levers here. We drop this down. Hey presto, ah, now I'm glad that's happened because there's a little clip here. It's hard to see on the camera, but there's a little clip there and that will stop that from happening. So clip more on that side and then that holds that into position. And then you've got two large mattresses on there. One will come over there. There's a set of ladders up there that clip onto here. And then, I don't know, two small children could be up there or you could use that for habitation storage space for all your bedding accessories. There's another I can see behind here. There's a double mains socket as well as a TV aerial point. One thing I'd like to mention, the lighting system, the amount of phone calls I've had over the years that people have had the lights on and they're panicked. We can't get any of the lights to work. All the lights, all everything's working on the habitation. The leisure battery is charged, but we can't get any of the lights to work. Hard to see on the camera, but behind this curtain is an override switch. And that, if you can see the lights are going on and off. So if you're sat down here at night and you're too lazy to reach up to the lights, there's just a little button here. The camera can come round and that just overrides all the lights. The amount of times over the years that people have not known that that button exists and it's hidden behind the curtains. Also here is, a, and also is a main supply as well as a 12 volt leisure supply as well as a TV aerial point. Underneath here we have plenty of storage. You can set the heating for central heating. It will blow out and there's two vents there. Underneath here the only button in here you should be using is the water heater override. So that as I say is the mains override to heat the hot water on mains. These are little peepholes that only engineers should really use. So there's a, you can override the mains charger. So when you're plugged in on mains, it will be charging the leisure battery and this will access the water heater for an engineer. Another mains socket here and plenty of storage. Another large drawer. So I think that's it really. That's all the features all explained. I don't think there's anything else. Typical auto sleeper, everything straightforward. All the three roof vents are exactly the same. You have a slide there if you have a blackout for night. Just pull this down. Two levers, they have a blue in, a brown insert. Press those in the center, push that up, and then that will give you ventilation. Pull it down, clicks into place to travel at speed. And I think that's it. Okay. Any questions, feel free to uh, ask below. Uh, if you click and subscribe, these habitation videos have proved popular, so I'll be doing many more on different versions, mostly auto sleeper and Roma homes that I supply. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on that next video.